Hello, Russell. How you doing? I'm doing really well. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Hey, always a pleasure. Great to have you back on the show. And wow, DeFi Technologies has had a nice run. Congratulations on all of your success. Thank um, you. Obviously, you guys are doing kind of like, I mean, I'm not going to call you like a mini micro strategies because micro strategies mainly invests just in Bitcoin. But I yep. like the business model where you're holding crypto on the balance sheet. I love it. And I want to talk to you about it. And yeah, please. Congratulations on your success. We we're looking at the chart the stocks up like 13 to 14 X over the last year. It's a yep. huge success story. And my first question is, what is the core mission of DeFi Technologies Inc? And what problem are you trying to solve? Well, the, the problem we're trying to solve is, is that your typical crypto investor um, has a really complicated process of, you know, opening a wallet, getting on an on-ramp, um, often buying uh, these protocols on unregulated exchanges, which you've seen um, some really dubious and, and, and quite frankly, illegal outcomes. FTX comes to mind. Um, and there, and there's been others, right. Where, where people have lost money, Genesis, there's bankruptcies. Um, and so, so what we decided, uh, in 2017, um, it took us three years to get regulatory permission, just to, just to do what we're doing. Um, and then of course to go public, but what we're trying to do is basically say to the investing public, look, these are incredible protocols. These are all growing two times faster than the internet. You don't need to go to these unregulated exchanges. They're, they're, they're dangerous. They can be dangerous. You can lose your money. Um, it, it can also be really complicated. Like imagine uh, trying to get your grandmother to buy uh, Solana on Kraken. Um, you know, she, she probably would be like, I'm sorry, I just, I, I don't care. I'm not going to do it. In our instance, we list these as traditional equities on regulated exchanges. Um, it, you know, it eliminates and simplifies all the issues related with um, any sort of illegal uh, misgivings or wrongdoings with unregulated exchanges. And you legitimately can pick up Solana as an equity or an exchange traded product on a traditional regulated exchange. Um, you know, your KYC, everything's covered by prospectus. And so it, it, it's really solving for a tremendous amount of regulatory risk. Um, and it just so happens, you know, that we're kind of riding this, this ETF wave. I call it the ETFication of everything, right? Everything's being turned into an ETF and, and we're doing that for crypto. Absolutely love your guys' business plan and I love your business model and I love crypto and I love Bitcoin and I hold a lot of yep. Bitcoin and crypto myself. So I'm Good personally kind of following the same strategy. And how does DeFi Technologies position itself in a competitive and evolving DeFi landscape? And what do you see as your competitive edge? Look, we're the we're the bleeding edge. Um, so so we have products that no one else has. If you look at you know the celebrations surrounding Ibit or the BlackRock um, the BlackRock ETF, you know that's the most successful ETF in the history of ETFs. We have 26, actually 27, 28 now, um, you know, uh, BitSensor, ICP, SUI. We're the guys and gals that are going out and, and, and looking at these protocols that everybody loves. Um, they don't have a ton of cachet. Not everybody has heard of them. Uh, for example, Core is, is one of our more successful products. It got launched on Coinbase at around a similar time that we actually launched our ETF. But we're basically going to these foundations and saying, look, no one knows who you are. Like SUI is incredible. It's the fastest, it's the fastest blockchain in the world. Have you heard of it? Most people haven't, right? Um, so we created an ETF. We went to the foundation and said, look, if you want to get more traction, if you want to get more people seeing who you are and what you can do, uh, let's launch an ETP. And we work symbiotically with the foundation to create these cutting edge ETPs on products that everybody should know about. Um, and, and, it, and it's crazy. You know, I like I, I, I jokingly, you know, it's funny, this stocks go down, stocks go up. Um, you've got this huge election tomorrow. We've launched three products in the last three weeks. We've got near all time high AUM. Uh, we are, we are incredibly profitable. 
we're now trading at close to two and a half times earnings with this recent sell-off. Um, and I don't know many stocks, it, it, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. It's, it's 20 years in the capital markets. You know, we're, we're, we're launching incredible products. We're doing incredible things. We've now got like 28, 29 ETFs in Europe. We're moving them to the Middle East. We're moving them to Africa. And we're trading at two and a half, two and a half times earnings um, and, and, and being treated as though we have no growth when this company is growing like at 100, 200, 300% a year. It, it's the capital markets are baffling to me right now. Now, in saying that, what milestone should we look forward to from DeFi technologies in the near future? Sure. Look, and, and, and again, this is a little bit of forward-looking statement. So everybody needs to understand this is my opinion, but, I, but I'm just trying to give people mathematical construct for them to understand the growth tra trajectory and the revenue and the, and the profit trajectory of this company. So, so we have close to 800 million in AUM right now, uh, USD, you know, you, we make 80, we basically make 10% yield off of our AUM. So close to 80 million USD. We've already made 115 million in our trading arm. Um, so if you add that 115 plus the 80, we're going to do close to 180 million, 195 million uh, to be exact um, this year ish. Um, in revenues, and it only costs us 10 million bucks to run this company. So that's that's a really, really profitable company. 175 million in profits, um, net income. And you know, you, you look at the market cap right now; it's probably 600 million. So, so just using simple math and averaging a bit, you know, it, it, assume it was 200 million we were making. And again, I, I know it's 175, but that's three times earnings. And so, where I'm going with this is, that's all in Europe. We're about to launch all our products. Um, and let's say we don't launch any more products. Let's just say we're stuck with 28 products for the rest of time. And we launch all of those in the Middle East and we launch all of those in Africa. If you only get $20 million in 28 products, that's an extra 560 million in AUM times two jurisdictions. And we plan on doing that in Asia um, and, and in Latin America as well. So 560, um, times four, that's 2.24 2.24 billion in additional AUM. Those are the milestones you need to look for. And that's assuming we don't launch any more products. That's assuming we only get 20 million in each of our products, which is probably very, very incorrect because, you know, Bitcoin, our core Bitcoin yield staking product where we pay people 5.65% to own Bitcoin. Like most people don't even know we have that, that we actually have a competitive product that actually pays you a 5.65% yield for owning Bitcoin. Like people, people need to understand that's, you're not even paying management fees. You're, you're getting 5.65%. That could be a multi-billion dollar product in and of itself. But assuming, assuming we just get 20 million in all of those, you're looking at an, another 2 billion in AUM that gets us to 2.8 billion. That's $280 million dollars in revenue us next year what steps are you taking to improve accessibility for non-technical users and educate them about decentralized finance so we are working on an education page for our website but honestly the the, the thing we're doing that is the most value is is we're launching these etps um, and by launching an etp making it accessible to the entire investing public. That's the best way you can educate them in and of themselves. And, you know, some of them get limited traction. Some of them get incredible traction, like our Solana product. I think we have the third largest Solana fund in the world right now, maybe even the second largest. Um, SUI is growing faster than any of our other products. And Core, as you mentioned, you know, Core is one of my top picks. Um, SUI would be another top pick. So it's it's uh, it's le legitimately just launching these ETPs and 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 giving more of a a trad fi or a traditional finance market presence to these protocols that you don't get when they're solely traded on these alt exchanges. Now, one of my questions for you is, I hold a lot of my crypto on a ledger. Yep. Now you guys are holding a lot of crypto, like huge amounts yep. of crypto does that get held on a ledger do you hold it at coinbase so so you guys, we you guys protect and hold your crypto 
So we have a, a Solana um, validator node and we have a core validator node and, and Solana is basically our biggest product and core, obviously you can hold your core and your Bitcoin on it. So, so the majority of all of our assets um, aren't lent, aren't, you know, we stake them ourselves and, and they stay on our own validator nodes. So there's really no counterparty risk whatsoever. Wow. Um, anything that we don't have a validator node for, we only deal with the top four custodians. So we'll deal with Fidelity, Coinbase, Anchorage. Um, and we also, we own a position obviously in, in what used to be called SIBA Bank. It's now called Amina Bank. We, we will use them a little bit as well. Um, but we're very cognizant of, of the risk associated with ledgers um, and balance sheets. And, and, you, and you've seen some really horrible outcomes, right? Like Genesis oh, yeah. and scary. FTX. Uh, so, so anyone who is, is dealing in this space, doing what you're talking about, I would highly recommend that they stick with um, basically custodians um, who have the strongest balance sheets because otherwise you're taking unnecessary risk. That was Russell Starr, the head of capital markets for DeFi Technologies. The symbol in Canada is DEFI. The symbol in America is DEFTF. Russell, have a great day and we hope you to too. see you again soon. Thanks again, everyone. Talk to you later. Always a pleasure. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.